Today I want to show you how to make a beautiful Greek mushroom pita or manita ropita. Mushroom pie, mushroom pita, call it whatever you like. It is going to be no joke delicious. Very simple to make, only a few ingredients, basically done in one pot and baked off in the oven. So let's get the show on the road. First things first, preheat your oven 375 degrees Fahrenheit or about 180 degrees Celsius. And that way it is done, dusted and out of the way. Next thing, get your pot going, preheating a little bit here. I'm going to start it there. And naturally, I'm going to do about three or four decent tablespoons of Greek olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. And as I'm in olive oil country, it is basically, it grows on trees here, literally. So, first things first, what am I going to do? I'm going to take my onion, and you don't even have to finely chop this up. You can just basically just thinly slice it because this is all going to incorporate as part of the pita. So in essence, it's actually going to cook twice. I'm going to saute it now at the beginning and it's also going to bake off with the rest of my pie. All right, my onion is done and there's that sizzle starting. Sorry about the one camera angle. I'm on actually, I'm in Greece on location for the annual olive oil harvest. So basically I'm dealing with only one camera and minimal lighting. So in go my onions and just give that a quick stir to get it all kind of going there. The next thing on the agenda is a little bit of garlic. So I'm going to use about a clove or so of garlic and just finely chop it or finely cut it up. It's going to go in there and there's just something so beautiful about that olive oil, onion, garlic just happening. It is absolutely delicious. The next thing that's going to go into my pita is a little sweet pepper. In this case, I'm using red pepper. This, believe it or not, was actually taken from a friend of mine's greenhouse. It's actually organic and grown right here on site or pretty damn close. And I know the guy that's growing it so I can vouch for the quality. So give that just a quick cut. And again, you're going to cut these into fairly small pieces. Cut like slivers or shards, if you will, and then chop them the other way. One thing that I will tell you when cutting up peppers, Cut from this side, the inside, rather than the shiny outside, your knife will grip better. Our pepper is done and it is going in. Nothing to this so far. Very easy, very common ingredients. Nothing to this. Give that a nice little stir. So all these veggies are releasing their oils and their flavors. That's exactly what we want. The next thing. One of my favorite veggies to use in the kitchen is leek. The thing about leeks though is A, they got excellent flavor, but you have to be really careful in cleaning them because they got all kinds of dirt and shit in here and it's just not a good thing. You have to split it and clean it thoroughly. So again, slices, nothing, uh, nothing too fancy or complicated. This is all going to go down into your flavor mix. So, in goes my leek. Oh, this is smelling really, really nice. Really, really, really nice. All right, so moving along. Time to season. A little bit of salt, and I mean a little bit. You don't want to go too much, because remember, we're going to be adding about 250 grams of feta in this, so that's where we're going to get most of our salty brininess from. A little bit of pepper, actually quite a bit of pepper. I'm My little bit of pepper is actually quite a bit of pepper. The kicker to this recipe is I'm going to be using a couple of tablespoons of dried rosemary. Time for the star of our show. Here I've got two pounds of mushrooms. A couple pounds of mushrooms one pound of oyster mushrooms 
and one pound of the regular plain Jane button mushrooms, the white mushrooms. Here's the thing, before anybody gets their panties in a bunch, I wash my mushrooms and I don't care who knows. The thing is, when you're dealing with this kind of, of vegetable, they say, oh, don't wash them, you know, and the people get all messed up and, you know, bent out of shape. Well, here's the thing. In my world, dirt is dirt. If your food or your veggies have got, like, stuff on them, dirt on them, you wash them. And, uh, you know, there's people that mess around with little claws and they wash their mushroom. It looks nice on camera, but you need to wash your veggies and your fruits. You wash your peppers, you wash your eggplants. Why the hell wouldn't you wash your mushrooms? Another trick I'm going to show you now, speed things up. Take your mushrooms and just start tearing them. Just like that. Makes it really fast and it's a pita. So what's going to wind up happening is it doesn't matter. Just start breaking them up with your hands. Even easier than slicing them up and you're going to get done also much faster. And now our oyster mushrooms. Again, I'm just going to tear these up. Nothing complicated, nothing fancy. These will cook down, give us another excellent flavor or an addition to our gorgeous mushrooms. All right, so now let me get rid of these. My mushrooms are all in. Now it's just a matter of cooking them down. And my God, the smell, now they're, you're going to get this natural, earthy goodness coming out of these. Wow. So now we're at a point where our mushrooms are pretty much cooked down. Most of the moisture is done. Next order of business is adding a little more depth of flavor. And how am I going to do that? With fresh herbs. And in this case, I am using dill and parsley, which go fantastic with, along the lines of our mushroom kind of uh, theme here. So. Just going to cut a little bit of dill first, chop it up, and I'm adding this at this stage of the game because I don't want to like cook it down into nothing. I don't, I, this is going to bake again. So it, because it's going to bake as well, I don't want to disintegrate it and next thing you know, I can't find any kind of dill or parsley flavor. So I'm just going to chop this up, loosey loosey, just, just like that. Oh, oh, maybe add a little more parsley there. I love parsley, especially in pitas and in a lot of dishes, you know, not just for garnish, but even as a flavor profile. It's not overpowering. It's just kind of there in the background, which is absolutely fantastic. All right, perfect. Oh, get back in there. So this is pretty much ready to go. The liquid has kind of evaporated out of it. So now I'm good to go and ready to build my pita. Let's kind of work ahead here and work with our uh, crust. Now in this case here I'm using puff pastry. Traditionally you can use phyllo. If you want you can use phyllo in this recipe as well. Not a big deal at all. Traditionally keeping five down, five up with layers of olive oil to kind of butter them in between and in this case look at this beautiful beautiful uh, crust so here's the thing all you're going to do is spread and line your pan like this 9 by 13 aluminum pan i happen to be using an aluminum pan because i'm in greece and i don't have like all my stuff here and yada 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 but in this case I'm just using an aluminum pan. Put it in. The next trick when using puff pastry, take your fork and just pinch or prick the, the bottom, putting a few holes in the puff pastry, in the dough. While it's cooking, it will stop it from kind of getting all kind of inflating on you too much and that's not a good thing. Now, you just want to gently pierce it with your fork. You don't want to stab the thing like it owes you money. Nothing like that at all. So now that my base is down, our bottom puff pastry sheet is ready to go. All I'm going to do very slowly is actually, I don't want 
even a little bit of liquid in this. I'm gonna get my other one, which is like a slot and spoon, and slowly just start filling it. Trying to get as little water as possible, as little liquid in your pita as you can. That's perfect. Let's get this last little bit of goodness. And now just spread this evenly or as evenly as you can. Now the last part of this before we top it off with my other puff pastry is our feta. And for this, I'm adding about 250 grams of the white nectar and just as evenly as you can, just chop it up or crumble it up actually, all over this, just like that. It doesn't get much easier than this. Now, our top. I'm going to grab this, open this up, nothing to this, and I'm going to show you a little trick now to sizing up your puff pastry if it's ever too big and working with it. Here, I'm going to leave that here. So, this is obviously way bigger than I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to line it up with one corner here, just like that. So this corner here is lined up. I'm now going to take my knife and very carefully just start cutting around the edge as I need it. And you're going to see at the end how, this, how perfectly this is going to turn out. But here's the thing now. I'm going to take this, I'm going to push it down on the inside of my pita, just like that, and I'm going to take the bottom layer and fold it over and sealing it up in the process, just like that, boom, 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 nothing to this at all. So now I have my pita, which is all nice and sealed, just like that. If I want to take and make kind of a little pattern, I could. If you want to get all funky with the dough and just kind of make little shapes or whatever. So I'm just going to do something like this on top. I know I'm making a K. So there you go. Something super easy. Nothing to this at all. And there it is. Very simply, that's my pita. Now, I'm going to take this, I'm going to very lightly drizzle a little bit of olive oil over it, just like that. You don't even have to brush this on or anything, it's so simple. This now is going to go into my 375 degree oven for about 25 to 35 minutes or until it becomes GBD, baby, golden brown and delicious. And now the moment of truth. Been out of the oven now for about five, 10 minutes. You hear that? Knock, knock, baby. That's the sound of crunchy, flaky deliciousness. It's done to perfection. It's, it is a more of along the lines of a deep dish, mangintaropita uh, or mushroom, uh, Greek mushroom pie. Let's get right to this puppy here. I'm gonna cut. Oh my God. The feta, the leek, the onion. There's like a gravy underneath this thing here. It's absolutely fantastic. Wow. Holy shnikes. This is like so freaking delicious. It smells so good. A little bit of my puff pastry. It's still like, whoo, really, really hot, but it's going to be so worth it. What are the odds of me incinerating like the top of my mouth?
<clears throat> that is so absolutely freaking delicious. <clears throat> the mushrooms, the the dill, the parsley, the rosemary, all come together. The feta adds a certain tanginess to this. Oh my gosh, this is so delicious. It is actually, this would be perfect on like a potluck, the holidays, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, whatever you are celebrating, this is it. What the hell, bring it to a, bring it to a funeral, you know what, cheer people up. But here's the thing, please try this. I urge you, it's not that complicated at all to make and it is gonna like make you look like a star. So that's it for this episode on my manitaropita or my uh, Greek mushroom pita or pie. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I really hope you tried this. Subscribe if you haven't already. Love getting new subscribers and having our community grow. Share these videos. You know what? They're a snap to make, nothing complicated at all. And check me out online kensgreektable.com, all one word. And until next time, I thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.